What's going on, everybody? Hopefully you've had a good start to the week. Um, just a reminder, no overtime on Friday. We're going to do it Sunday night after the football games, just due to my job back to Pennsylvania Friday and coming back Saturday. And then in, it was about like two and a half, three weeks, we'll be doing the auction slash fix sale. Um, I think that was pretty much it just for anything that's going on with the live stuff currently. You still might catch me coming on looking over cards and stuff like that. But something I want to do is um, try to do this about once a week. To, there was like news around the hobby type deal um, within the past week to where if I did a full video on it, it would be like two or three minutes. So I try to group some of this stuff together. Some of it can be funny. Some of it's pretty cool stuff. But I just figured I don't know how many people knew about all this and we're going to just roll with it. Um, I did take out... One thing that I'm going to use for a separate video, and then of course we'll have the 10,000 Club PSA 10 uh, list coming out tomorrow. Tomorrow, I already have that done, and I'll go more on that in that video. I added some new uh, columns onto it, so quite interesting. All right, let's pull up starting here. So this is PSAs. Um, little tracker where they're at as you guys can see everything from walkthrough to economies pretty much uh well either caught up or complete not too bad on express you're talking about a month old which that's the latest complete through date which could be due to the fact of having an autograph authenticated graded stuff like that so not too bad that's your 150 dollar level right there and i believe the super express is still at 300 i was hoping that today we would get a, uh, another Level opened up, but I guess not. Maybe they're holding off till November so they can take another chunk out of Modern. As you can see, Modern, 36% through a January, which I do have one um, that's in assembly as of Saturday. So, quite interesting to see that they're working on a Saturday, um, pushing different stuff still. So, they're still doing weekends, some long hours at PSA. Modern, pretty much same pace as Ultra Modern. Uh, and vintage so it looks well vintage a little bit further ahead you guys can see where TCG and the quarterly specials are offhand but figure I'll throw this up just in case anybody uh, hasn't seen it yet now remember this is only if you submitted yourself if you went through a bulk submitter you got completely different complete through dates and percentages and all that stuff so this is if you submit yourself or you want you know tagged along like you and your buddy tagged along on one person's account and mailed stuff in but the group submitters if you submitted through somebody like that their complete through dates are really different but they're starting to catch up i'm looking at probably about I think my oldest ultra modern is like the middle of may so we're talking about four more months uh worth uh, until they hit the caught up point. Now, I don't know how much they're going to be slammed in between all that with all those orders that went out from when people knew they were raising prices and then shutting down. But it gives you an idea offhand. All right, let's move to Beckett. Beckett said they were going to open up a new level. Um, this month, I believe, they said on... I can't remember if it was on an Instagram or Twitter or something like that there I read. But currently, it's just the premium services, 250 bucks, or you could do the one with uh, no subgrades. I believe it's 150, and you're looking here, 10 to 15 business days to get it back, so two to three weeks. Yeah, I mean it's expensive for two to three weeks getting it back, but if you got a thick stock card worth some money, at least it gives you a ballpark of when it's coming back. Looks like the expresses. If you guys still had any of those out there, 30 to 45 business days, which I think it's a little bit off from when they shut down. I, I might be off. Then your standard economy, boof, way, way, way out there. All right, that covers the top two. Um, SGC, you guys are already tracking with SGC that they bumped their um, times up. I believe it's 45 to 50 days now. Um, they, they're trying to strive for earlier dates, but they're giving you the worst scenario on to it. So still not bad for SGC at $30 a pop, unless you use a bulk submitter or you're going through with bulk yourself offhand. All right, let's hit HGA. Let me pull this up on, let me take this down. We'll pull the other thing up. 
All right, so everybody's tracking last week. Um, I think it was towards the end of the week this came out here. Uh, HGA, they said they're aware of the fake Mahomes autograph and the fake Gretzky OPG that was uh, sent through their company and they slabbed it. Which, now, I'm not saying HGA, you're a bad, bad person for doing because all these companies have had these issues in the past. The thing with HGA, it's a new company. Social media is completely way different from when all this uh, other stuff happened with like Beckett and PSA. So HGA is kind of a little bit more under the microscope than the others. Because everybody else already knows that, you know, PSA and Beckett, oh, they've had trim cards, fake patches. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think. I, I'll, I'll kind of alter cards, go through them. And with HGA, you know, with the, they call it computer intelligence, or artificial intelligence, I should say. There's, you know, it's supposed to be able to pick a lot of this stuff up. Well... You know, it is what it is. It's going to happen out there. You know, things are always going to squeak through. At least on this one here, I will say they were more direct on to it. I liked how they handled it publicly. You know, it, it wasn't like they're throwing fingers all across the board like they have in the past, which is a good thing for, you know, their PR offhand. Um, I also heard there is now a Lemieux... I can't know if it's the Tops or the Opeachy rookie also now that they're saying made it through the cracks as well, too. And for anybody who doesn't know, the Gretzky Opeachy is like one of the big time counterfeit cards out there. You have to like look at the ice onto the card. And I believe if it looks more grayer, it's fake because it should be white. The blues have been off onto it. And then also on the back, the little hockey guy. You have to use a magnifier to really see it. But like with the originals, you could see the bleed over onto it. Uh, I'm going to see if I could find the article onto it and probably use it just in case anybody's into vintage or, you know, is in a market for an Opeachy Gretzky just so you could see some of the points. I mean, this letter was sent by Opeachy a long time ago out. And. It's really a good read, so I'll look at trying to get something out on that just so everybody can take a look at it. You know, if you want to bookmark the video or whatever, in case you're looking for one, it just gives you some, you know, general knowledge of what to look for onto them. But if you look here, um, I'm going to read on the second paragraph. It says, any cards fully processed by us, proven to be counterfeit, will be purchased back at the perceived value. I like that. You know, we talked about, I think it was last week, about PSA's guarantee, Looks like HGA is doing the same thing onto it. The only thing I'm not too sure of is where they're going with perceived value. Um, with PSA, they come out there and say market uh, value onto it. I don't know if perceived is what you're what they're saying is what you claimed it as on your insurance. Now I've never submitted HGA. I tried way early on, could never get through it, and I just stopped. But I don't know if that's the amount of insurance the person. Um, put onto the card, or if it's going to be their perceived market value of the card. So, the only thing I'm kind of curious on, and I'm going to try to dig into that a little bit more. The other part I didn't know, it says uh, they've discontinued case break giveaways. Haven't really, I don't know what that all entitles. Um, kind of interesting offhand onto it. I guess they were entering people into uh, case break giveaways, a so spot into a case break. And sending out cars, but it says it caused a lot of drama or issues onto it. But I really like that. Um, that's just really a good idea that, you know, people that are submitting to you, giving back to them. I, I like that. I'm hoping that they could find another avenue um, instead of the case break giveaways. Maybe give out some boxes instead. Or something like that. Or just buy a whole stack of cards or stuff that's graded by them and... You know, use those as giveaways. I'm not too sure, but I thought that was really interesting, and I didn't know they were doing that. But that's a good way to give them back to the people that are supporting your company. Um, just, just phenomenal. I mean, I was really, really in shock. I didn't know they were doing that. If any of you guys did or were part of it, just hit me up in the comments because I really didn't know any much about it until I seen this right here. But again, it's no fault. You know, I, I wouldn't say no fault, but it's. 
it was bound to happen to HGA with stuff like this. It's happened to every other company out there. Except for SGC. I don't remember anything bad coming out of SGC when they were just pretty much like a vintage company. I could be wrong, but I, nothing's hit me off the top of my head. I remember stuff with GMA. I could sit there and think of a couple of the newer companies that had issues with their slabs and stuff. Um, but I, I can't really think of much with SGC. I mean, I know they went through a part where it was easy to crack open their slab a long time ago and they fixed it just like, you know, PSA had that issue. I don't, I can't remember Beckett having that issue offhand. Um, but you know, like I said, any grading company is going to have issues. How they respond to it is how I always look at it. And I, I give them props for this. It was pretty well done. Um, there is no pointing fingers at competitors and everything, which you see and hear a lot of from, you know, grading companies. They took responsibility. They got a course of action. And like I said, secondly, I really was kind of interested in what the case break giveaways were. I guess they're giving spots away in case breaks. I don't know what the case breaks were or anything, but, you know, that, that was pretty nice. Pretty nice. Oh, here it is. I just look at, we're looking. I just happened to read this. We are working on a new structure for giveaways that will ensure winners know that they haven't received giveaway items by mistake. Okay, that must be where it all came into play at. But not bad, not bad at all. All right, one more thing on HGA. Now I thought this was funny. Um, <laughs> I know this has happened with uh, some of the other newer companies, to where their slabs have had something crazy go on with it. And let me pull this up. Now, I couldn't get the actual video of this. Because for some reason, it wouldn't let me take it. Let me see where I had it at here. Pull this down. So this here, pull it up. Now, I can't get the volume on or nothing like that. They're showing it, but the bow into it. Kind of crazy. The guy just makes a funny video that, you know, look what my uh, slab can do, yours can't. That's a spinner. It's a spinner. And it, that kind of went a little bit viral onto the internet um, about it. But it is what it is when you start looking at stuff like that across the board. Like I said, everybody's bound to have something like that happen. I, I know there were ones where, you know, cards aren't sealed right. I've seen people get messed up slabs back from um, PSA and they have to resend them back in all that stuff there so I just thought you know the way he did he tried to make it comical onto it um and everything like that but a little bit different a little bit different onto it offhand alrighty as we're going down the line here with everything I'm closing out stuff because that way I don't have to go back to it all right last thing uh, I've had a lot of people in the last two or three months hit me up about DC Sports 87. And it's about their consignment. Now, I know we there's a bad taste in the hobby about the word doing consignments because of, like, PWCC, Probstein, etc. Um, DC Sports, I highly would recommend anybody use them if you want to send in cards to, for them to sell for you on eBay to take the stress away of selling, having to put up with the... You know, the customer service part of it all. Because they'll deal with it all for you. Offhand, I've used them in the past. Uh, now he has a website. I know it's been up for a while and I haven't said anything in. I've been letting stuff stack up and I finally just sent a package off today. So I'm going to pull this up on the screen. I'll put a link to this if you're one of them people that always look at consignments uh, in the description. Let me pull this up here. All right, I need to get a little bit bigger for everybody. All right, so this here is their um, fact page pretty much onto it. So if you send under 20 cards, you're looking at about three business days until they list it on eBay for you. Standard, 13 business days. Now, usually these fluctuate depending on weekends and stuff like that. So they could be anywhere around there. Normally when I send in, it's usually over. If I'm doing 20 cards, they're more like something high value that I need to move quicker. Now, the way they do the under 20 cards explainer, you can't just send 
five packages under 20 cards out the same day because they'll only accept one. They knew people were going to try to get over on. So it's one package per day under 20 cards, and you'll get the three business day thing on to it. Otherwise, you know, just wait it out. All right, so if you're going to do it, this is where you go down on to it all. They just need your name, email, phone number, and you write the word consignment on to it. And what I do is I just, everything that I put in the box has like a piece of paper taped to it with all the information on to it. And if you're brand new, you just have to wait till they get in. Um, if you don't get an email from them with the, when your first package comes in, it tells you just to contact them. They're very, very... Um, quick on emailing you back plus you they have a Facebook group you could hit up and somebody will always be there trying to help you out onto it so it's pretty good overall I don't have this account on here yet to show you guys what it looks like but basically it shows you all your cards what they sold for if the payments in and stuff like that and it gives you a running balance now also you gotta pay attention if you're sending your package by post office or UPS FedEx two different addresses um, all their auctions are five days. They all start at 99 cents. Now there are some times where they'll do seven and ten day auctions, usually around like holiday weekends and stuff like that, just so they don't have their people working over the weekends or the holidays and stuff. So that's always understandable. They will list items on buy it now, but you have to put in the lowest price you're willing to accept along with your bin price. Cards got to be over $5,000. They don't negotiate offers. It's just if they hit your uh, buy it now, it's getting sold. So one of those things you got to stay up and on top of offhand. The only thing I was curious about, which I couldn't find on here at all, is a lot of times cards go up and down on um, price value. So I'm just wondering how quick they can alter that onto their eBay store from the time you hit them up. I, I just haven't seen it at all. So that'd be my only question if I'd send something big into them over $5,000. Normally I just do it on auction anyhow. How soon are cars listed on eBay and it just talks to you right here about it? Uh, talks about what I told you about the 20 day packages and multiple 20 day cards are shipped to us from the same customer on the same day we will process the first within two to three business days and the rest go into standard submission so just in case anybody's going to think about doing it he already thought way ahead of time on it and let me pull down here okay so here's how here's your pricing on to it if the final sale price is a dollar to 9.99 80 percent of sales 75 cents for the listing 10 to 25 well 24.99 80 percent minus 50 percent uh 50 cents for listing sorry 50 cents per listing and then 25 to 9.99 99 you get 85 percent of the sale price minus the 50 cents listing if it's between a thousand five thousand you get 90 percent of the sale price over five thousand ninety seven percent of the sale price minus three hundred dollars per listing pretty reasonable offhand um especially if you got cards that are five five dollars and up and that's pretty much what they try telling you that if you want look at don't send them all kind of you know cards they're going to sell for 99 cents a dollar two dollars three dollars because it's really not going to be worth your money on to it occasionally you're going to send in them five and ten dollar cards that might only hit a dollar two dollars on to it but you know with it it's going to happen they're looking you know for more of the bigger stuff but they still do all the other stuff as well too but there's a lot of information on here. Now the only thing on here, he stopped doing Zelle. Zelle is no longer. I know he's taken off. But you can receive, request your payouts through the website um, on your dashboard to get paid. So you can either get PayPal goods and services, check by mail, a bank wire if it's over ten grand, or an ACH direct deposit. Pretty cool. Um... Depending on how you want to go through with it and everything like that. I'm just going to probably do the PayPal goods and services on to it. That's how we did it uh, before he went with the website and everything. And it's not bad at all. Not bad at all. So, I mean, it looks... I'll tell you, I've never had any issues with him. Um, I've known a lot of people that used uh, DC Sports. They tried PropC, they tried PWCC, and they stick with DC Sports. It, it, it's good customer service, which we don't hear a lot about in a the hobby. Um, they're very active in responding. 
So, and I mean, you can't beat it really overall. Uh, here's the thing about, you know, they don't do memorabilia, so don't send it to them. They will do sealed wax. You just have to read about it. Um, if you want us a lot, put a note on it. And I did that on my stuff before. I just put it together and put a sticky on it. says, you know, list is a lot or something. I think that's why I put list is a lot onto it. And that's what they'll do for you. Especially if you have like mine where like Jude Bellingham rookie bases. And I'm just like, yeah, I just put them as a lot. They'll get a little bit more hopefully for it. Or get a little more attraction. So... I just wanted to cover this because I do get emails. I usually get about two or three a week about DC Sports 87. It's never nothing bad. Just people really, you know, curious about it. Have I used them and stuff? And I figured I'd throw it into this video here just so everybody can see it offhand. Um, like I said, I, the guy was in the... Uh, I'm trying to think how I can put this into... A lot of different groups out there um, on Facebook and certain other sites... And, you know, I like I said, I never had any issues on to. I knew a lot of people were sending in large amounts last year to them of cards, and I'm talking six figures plus. And, you know, they just go through and get their stuff. No hiccups, no nothing. Very, very good, reputable company. Uh, again, they do have a Facebook page that you can go on there if you have Facebook. You know, they're always willing to help. There's the same thing as what's on this website here. They'll tell you on there, and if you got questions, other people will help you out. Alrighty, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to hit some different things up onto a little bit longer video. Uh, just some things that I've seen that I was going to do full videos on, but it just made more sense looping these all together into one. And I do, like I said, well, a PSA 10 video coming out, and there's another uh, kind of different video that I'm going to put out. Uh, I don't want to call it stolen art, but it, it's just... Um, Two different companies using the same type of art. But that those will be coming out over the next couple days. I uh, probably won't have a video out on Friday. When I get back Saturday, I'll probably get one posted late. Unless there's, you know, a couple things I come across and stuff. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it, everybody. I appreciate the support to the channel. I'm getting together the items for the 5,000... Uh, subscriber giveaway not this weekend probably next weekend is when i will launch that video so be on the lookout for that and just let me pull this down this is one of the items that came in that's an stc 45 68 tops um home run well the 67 home run leaders but 68 tops and you got hank aaron on a four five with mccovey santo and went on to it so there's good. There's four more items. I just got. I gotta wait for the stuff to end up uh, coming in the mail and everything with other orders that I got going in late this week, early next week. Bye, right, everybody. Appreciate the support to the channel. I will catch you all in the next video. Have a good rest of the week, and I'm out.